this is how I masked out the sunglasses in my band Chasing Satellites music video for our Je- Destiny's Child mashup cover, which is on our Women of the 90s uh, tribute, tribute album. If you're into the Fearless Records Punk Goes Pop compilation CDs, you should uh, check it out. It's uh, all Chasing Satellites, but it's different Women of the 90s bands, artists. So yeah, enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm making this. I can't believe I'm making this video. The only reason this video is being made is because QuickTime allows you to record your screen while you are working. So here is a here is a tutorial on how to key out sunglasses or anything, picture frames, anything really. It's just a long, tedious process. I think I've spent about 72 hours on this video, um, like almost straight while working on a couple other projects at the same time, but I really wanted to make another tutorial because I haven't done one and it is currently 11.43 p.m. and uh, on November 26th and the video that you are watching being edited will be released on the 28th. So I've spent the past four to four days just busting my butt trying to get this thing done. I wanted to get it up today, but you know what? I want it to be perfect, so I decided, because it is for my own band, I should just, you know, postpone it. Just let it, let it be natural. You gotta, you gotta get it to be perfect before you put something out. You don't want to put a half-assed, not completed video on the internet, because we all know what happens when that happens. Anyway, so... I tried to look up tutorials on YouTube for this and I couldn't really find anything. Uh, There were a few that were like, you know, how to do like the the neon squiggles over your eyes or over glasses for like a still image or like a a stabilized image that's on a tripod. Uh, This was just a lot of trial and error, which is why it took so long to be completely honest with you. It I don't think it had to take as long as it did, um, but I am not at all a professional After Effects editor. I mean, I am, I get paid to do After Effects, which is what a professional is, but this is something totally out of my skill level. I don't have the patience for this. I don't have the time for this, but somehow I decided to take this challenge on. So I pre-edited this video in Premiere how I wanted it because this was not my initial idea. If it had been, we would have planned for this. So that's like the number one thing I can say for all of you watching this right now. If you are planning on doing something like this, do it from the beginning. Do everything the day of shooting. That's the thing, you guys. I pre-edited this video and then I brought it into Adobe After Effects. Um, If you guys need Adobe software, if you're a student, there are discounts. If you are not a student, there are still discounts if you use the links down below. Just throwing it out there. If you're trying to get into your editing game, I want to help you out and I want you to be able to do it as affordably as possible. What I had to do was create, you know, a sequence. So I just brought the sequence in and then I had to go through and motion track everything. So to motion track, all you gotta do is click on your clip. And then if you go up to animation, you can track your motion in there. So you just go down and go to track motion and you can track it in Mocha, which is something I haven't really tampered around with. The video that I looked at when I was trying to figure this out, they were editing it in Mocha and it was a little bit too complicated for me to understand. So. I just went old school. So I motion tracked this, but because it wasn't a stabilized image, because this is all handheld, it's all on a a gimbal, a little mini Steadicam that my best buddy Justin filmed this video on. This was a lot harder for After Effects to motion track because not only are the subjects moving, but the camera is also moving. Okay, so when you finish keyframe motion tracking your footage, You need to uh, create a null object. And once you create that null object, you're then going to go to edit target under your motion tracker window. And once you're under your motion tracker window, you press edit target. You want to attach it to that null 
And then you want to make sure you push apply because if you don't push apply, it's not going to work. I'm sure there's more efficient ways of editing than uh, the ways I used, but this is what I did. So with that null object, that's a really important part of After Effects. We edit everything to null objects um, just because we can, it's like a layer on top of a layer. So whatever you want to put inside your sunglasses or inside your frame or inside whatever it is, take that layer and you're going to attach that layer to the null object. And the reason we wanted to do that is because we want it to follow it. We want the null object to be the parent. That's what it's called in After Effects. It's called parenting. You can use Command G if you're on a Mac. I don't know what it is if you're on a PC. Sorry, guys. But if you're on a Mac, Command G pulls up your masking tool. That's a hotkey. I don't know a whole, a whole lot of hotkeys. So you push G and then I masked where I wanted the, the overlaid image to show, which is inside the sunglasses. So I went inside the frames of the sunglasses with my mask tool. I would mask it out, but then as it moved with the motion tracker, the motion tracker wasn't always accurate because it would move around on the, that white section of the sunglasses. You know, it's not a perfectly stable thing and the sh there's shadows so the pin moves and it's just, that's why motion tracking is so tedious and so time consuming, but I think it kind of looks cool when it's a little bit trippy and glitchy and it's warping and moving around and stuff. It makes it look very uh, animated. Obviously the angles would change, the rotation of the head would affect what the mask looked like so I had to go in and manipulate the mask and it wasn't you know once every clip it was once every fucking keyframe you guys I had to do this every keyframe so that's what I'm saying if you want to do this you need to plan it out proper there are better ways to do this there are more practical ways to do this this is the hardest way to do it but we did it and essentially that's all I had to do so I masked it, changed it, adjusted every freaking frame of this entire video. And then uh, once I got one clip completed, I would pre-compose that. You just right click and, and push recompose right after you highlight all those layers. And uh, for this specifically, I wanted to make sure that it would trim it down to the area of the uh, layers, the layer length and not the full sequence length. So make sure you check that box, especially if you're doing something like this where you need to know how long each clip is because you're gonna have to go back in and re-edit things. It's just the reality of the situation. You wanna save yourself a little bit of hassle if you can. So once that was complete, once I pre-composed everything, it was basically just rinse and repeat. I did it every single clip, every single frame. Like I said, that's like 5,700 frames took 48 hours to do. It's literally just rinse and repeat. Um, I, there's not a whole lot else I could tell you guys about this. There's not really any tips other than the ones I gave you. Um, patience, that's, there's, uh, man, I'm watching a render right now and it just messed up in two frames and it's really frustrating because now I gotta go all the way back in and re-edit a little tiny bit of the video and it's, it's the most frustrating thing. Always render out a draft before you export your final because if you render out your final and it's a bazillion gigs and it took 48 hours to render out because that's After Effects and you're on a laptop, by the way. Yeah, I'm doing this all on a MacBook. Go MacBooks, yay. Click the ads, cause I gotta get a new iMac, guys. Mine just shat the bed, and instead of giving me the $520 gift card Apple was gonna give me, they decided to give me $120. So that sucks. Uh, so yeah, click the ads, buy a photo print, something. So yeah, it was basically just rinse and repeat until we were done, and make sure you render out a draft before you render out your final. And that's how I uh, framed these guys out. Let me know if you guys need help with other things down below. I got some presets for sale. I got photo prints for sale. I sell stock footage. You can also sell your stock footage. I have a podcast called Project Freelance. It's a weekly podcast about freelancing, whether you're a filmmaker, photographer, musician, or an entrepreneur of any kind, you should check it out. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like, give it a subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ladies, I've been mad at home The club is full of ballers and their pockets full of chrome And all you fellas think I go with the friends This is 1130 and I'm dropping, dropping, dropping Don't you say you're gonna go, yeah, sure you're gonna mess With the party, ain't no stops, so let's make
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 